Steve Parker Audiobooks presents The Crevasse, written and read by Steve Parker. It had opened up in the middle of the main road of our town late summer, a few years back, without attracting much notice. There was just a tiny crack back then, and who's going to notice one more crack on a small town road? As anyone who's ever worked on a small town council will tell you, budgets are tight and costs are never ending. Repairs are a constant concern, which is why so many of the local houses and farms have dirt roads rather than asphalt. Except for the old Mitchell house, of course. But they had done very well in the past and paid for their own blacktop so that loose stones wouldn't mess up the paint job on Michael Mitchell's fancy new Mercedes. But I digress. The crack had gone unrepaired all year and had slowly grown, but still no one paid much attention. It's not like there weren't potholes around. Hell, the big one on Old Kent Road was so bad, traffic had to drive around it. It had been accidentally enlarged by Jim Brock's tractor, who refused to pay attention to requests to not bring it into town. He didn't have a car, he said, and needed to get supplies at the shops. Supplies sure. Small brown clinking supplies full of effervescent, slightly toxic golden liquid mostly, but I digress again. I seem to be making a habit of doing that. I guess a fellow will do most anything to avoid talking about... well. After the first full year of the new crack, the town hit a pretty bad patch. The worst drought in 50 years the news said. If you listen to the old men in front of the local watering hole, it was more like the worst in a hundred years. How they could possibly know that when the oldest of them was just over 60 was anyone's guess. But on top of that, a plague of insects attracted by the rising soil temperature, said the local experts, ate almost all of what little we did manage to grow. In the face of all this, little wonder that no one really noticed that the crack had stretched most of the way across the main road in town, except for the local kids. I mean, it was uh, pretty deep, you see, and they spent a lot of time poking it with sticks and dropping lit matches into it to watch how far they fell. I guess we really should have noticed that, but you know, as long as folks could still drive over it, it just wasn't a big enough issue to draw much attention. Everyone was just trying to make a living. The town survived the lean year, as it always does, digging deep into savings and taking out a few government loans, as well as a healthy donation from the Mitchells, for which they would doubtlessly extract yet more business considerations from the local council. A Mitchell never does anything helpful unless it profits their family. And the crack continued to grow. By this time, you could really hear it and feel it under your wheels when you drove over it, and the heavier vehicles took to using a detour, unless they absolutely had to use the main road you know, for deliveries and such. It started to come up in council meetings even, but there was just so much else which had to be done, especially after the terrible harvest. You know, families had to be fed, schools kept open, emergency services, water, gas, electricity. You know, there was just nothing left in the budget to pave over a crack in the road. And so it grew and grew. Pretty soon, parents had to warn their kids away from playing around the crack. It was now so wide that cars had to take a detour around it, and it was so deep that the bottom was barely visible, even with the strongest torch. Old man Alan fell in drunk and broke his leg in three places. It took the whole day for the emergency workers to get him out and over to the hospital two towns over. The workers uh, talked uneasily about a terrible stench emanating from the bottom of the crack, which was now so big that crack didn't really describe it anymore. Folks started calling it the crevasse. They laughed a little when they said it. I kind of miss the sound of laughter. It didn't take long before passers-by could smell what the workers had been talking about. It was a foul odour, not quite like anything anyone had smelt before. Part rotten egg, part rancid flesh, part slimy mould, all just disgusting. 
people started avoiding it, or if they had to go near, they held handkerchiefs over their faces or wore those, uh, those hospital masks. You know. Council discussions grew more serious, but the funds were simply not available. Even the Mitchells were feeling the pinch from the bad year and were unwilling to shell out cash for repairs, even as a short-term loan to the town. The crevasse seemed to grow daily, as did the smell. Shops started to shut down on Main Street. Vehicles stopped going down there altogether. Even the kids stopped throwing things in it. It had grown so large that it seemed to take up real estate in the minds of the locals. It was all anybody talked about, all anyone thought about. It even invaded sleeping minds and inhabited the townsfolk's dreams, and later, their nightmares. And one night, the sounds started. It was just a, a low, unsettling murmur at first, you know, like a small group of doctors talking quietly in a hall outside your hospital room. But it soon grew. Cracks and pops like little firecrackers, then huge, deep, shuddering groans throughout the night. The weirdest of all was that it stopped in the day, as if the sun calmed the active ground. Warmth again said the experts, just like that which attracted the bugs that ate our crops during the year. The deep, dark ground swelled with absorbed heat during the day, and then shrank and compressed during the cold night, which caused all the sounds. Each night, though, it got worse. Louder and louder came the pops, longer and deeper came the groans, until finally, one night, an almighty crack emanated from the crevasse, bouncing around the township with such force that windows blew in. The next morning, the sounds did not stop as they previously had with the rising of the sun. A thick black smoke covered the entire center of town, and the foul stench was so bad that everyone moved away from the streets and up onto the surrounding hills to watch from afar. Local experts donned wartime gas masks and ventured in to examine the crevasse, and never came back. Government vans filled with folks in hazmat suits and fancy equipment set up on the edge of the town before venturing into the smoke and, likewise, were never seen again. The groans are getting louder, and dark red flashes are emanating from the black cloud covering my town, and I don't mind telling you, I'm scared. More scared than I have ever been in my life. I'm getting the hell out of here, and I suggest you do the same while we still can.